Welcome to Bon Appetit, where we make all of your dreams in the kitchen come true. Today's recipe is scalloped potatoes. These make a really good side for any entree, any time of year, especially the holidays. So come and check out our ingredients. What I have here is tin washed and scrubbed russet potatoes. This recipe traditionally calls for Yukon Golds, and those would give it a bit more buttery flavor, but I'm going with a, a drier flavor profile here because we'll be adding one and a half cups of milk. I have a full cup of heavy cream, and three tablespoons of flour. I have some fresh crushed, fresh ground black pepper, fresh ground salt, uh, three tablespoons of butter, a whole chunk of Parmesan. We'll see how much of that we end up using. Two large sprigs of rosemary, and almost half a cup of fresh chopped garlic. So uh, a lot of people would use chopped onion for that. We're subbing out the chopped onion for garlic because we love garlic and it's going to add, it's going to pair really great with the rosemary and the potato. Plus onions tend to give us a little bit of heartburn, so we're <laughs> going to skip those. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, slice these potatoes up and then start making a uh, moisture mixture. We have our three tablespoons of butter here in our saucepan. Melt those down with the garlic. I'm not going to saute this garlic because this recipe goes into the oven for about an hour. But I do want that butter melted because we're going to mix it with our liquid ingredients. So once this is melted, I'll pull it off of the heat. I've got it on about medium heat. This should take about two to five minutes. We use fresh rosemary because we have it growing right out front. You can see I've chopped this up. This is about five passes with my knife, and it's given us almost three tablespoons of chopped rosemary. After I began to slice the potatoes, I only used eight. So this is about four pounds of sliced potatoes. I used the mandolin side of my cheese grater. Just chop, chop, slice, slice, slice. A little crazy on it. And so it gets you a nice thinness and it's really fast. It'd be a lot easier than running all of these through my knife. So I'll deal with those in a minute. Let's start with our moisture. milk. On that cream. All of our flour. All of our salt and pepper. Melted butter. Ooh, okay. Get me on you? Sure. I mean, no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil in our baking dish. I believe this is a 9 by 13 maybe, I'm not sure. Take a little paper towel, just spread that around to all, all corners, get the bottom fully covered, and a little bit up the sides. This will make serving and clean up easier, of course. Go ahead and throw down a layer of these potatoes. Carrie. Yes, dear. What do you call a potato at a sporting event? Uh. A spectator. <laughs> That's cute. We're getting our fill of potassium and vitamin C with the skins. Yes, you'll notice I did not peel these potatoes because most of the ingredients, all the vitamins and minerals that are good for you are in the skin. Not all of them, but if you leave the potato, if you leave the skins on your potatoes, you're going to double the amount of fiber that's contained in the potato. And uh, potassium and vitamin C are contained within the skin of the potato as well. So now that I have a nice substantial layer for the bottom, I've completely covered the bottom of this casserole. We're going to take about half of our moisture. Half 
I guess adding cheese technically makes this an au gratin or all au gratin as we say in the south but we're not going to split hairs over that we're just going to add the cheese and enjoy it appreciate it for what it is Preheated our oven to 350 degrees. I always forget to mention that. Hey, Carrie. Yes, dear. Who's the most evil potato in the universe? Uh. Darth Tater. Times I've said remainder in this video, but take the remainder or liquid. Did I get any onion? No. Pour that across. Mm -hmm. Moisture should not be above the level of your potatoes. It should be about 75% of the way up to your potatoes. So definitely over half of the bottom, but that good garlic. That original just for this show i made that up just for this show. <laughs> all right we are out of ingredients <laughs> i like the look of what we've done so we're going to slide these into our 350 degree oven for a solid hour and we'll check back with you then it's that time again our oven timer went off let's check out our finished product it smells fantastic in here I think we'll be very pleased with the result. Signs to look for the bubbling, caramelized dairy. Like any casserole, you're supposed to let this sit for 20 to 30 minutes, but uh, hey Carrie, what do you think about that? I highly disagree. I it's, it's her favorite part. I think it deserves a bat. Let's go in. <laughs> yeah. I feel there's no real resistance from these potatoes. You can tell they're fully cooked. Got that nice browning of the Parmesan on top. And that. Mm. Smell that garlic and rosemary all mixing in with the parmesan. And as usual, thank you for joining us, Bon Appetit. 
Leave a comment below of any recipes you'd like to see us make in the future. And good luck and God bless. We use fresh rosemary because we have it growing right out front. Um, you can use, let's see, you can use, if it comes in a jar, comes in a thing, comes in a container. Don't you want more oil? <laughs> Some oil. Some <laughs> oil. This is how you open your olive oil. You pull the tab. <laughs> hey, Carrie. Mm hmm. What do you call a fake potato? Mm. I don't know. I can't remember either. I forgot the punchline. Is it a impot? Imposter tater. <laughs> Uh, hey, Carrie. <laughs> hey, Carrie. <laughs> oh, I know. Imitator. An imitator. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs>